Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good. And Donna, good to see you. I I, uh, I heard you might have had some success with the team on some of the techniques. Fantastic. Um, and do we have Chopper and Patrick on yet? Yes, we're here. Yeah, we're both here. All right. Well, good morning, everybody. So this is um, uh, an exciting uh, opportunity here, and I just want to share with you um, a couple of things and then ask these uh, these gentlemen some questions on how they grow their business. But, um, you know, Chopper is probably one of the best networkers I've seen. And, you know, ev this is evidenced by um, we uh, took a photo at R4 and I sent it to Mark Warham, who I uh, acquired the office in Plantation from. And I said, we miss you this year. And he goes, you're with Chopper? Nothing else. That was his response. And it seems like everywhere I go, somebody knows Chopper. No offense to you, Patrick. I'm sure a lot of people know you. But, um, uh, you know, Chopper, I'm sure that that translates into a lot of of business and if you can share with the group you know what um what you do to expand your brand outside of oakland to get referral business and what type of referral business you are looking to get so um chopper if you can start us off here well i go to all the conferences and i'll be at um r4 um the state conferences you know we have triple play here um, and then uh, New Jersey was used to have a lot more when uh, Jeff and Joe owned the region. Um, so always getting in front of people, meeting people, um, very active in my participation at the different conferences and stuff. And especially when we meet people from out of, out of state, I always tell them uh, people don't generally leave your area to move to New Jersey. They'll probably leave New Jersey to go go to you. So if they're looking to buy by you, give us a call. Um, you know, I have over 15,000 names and numbers in my phone. I'm active on social media. Um, it just, it's it just an ebb and flow. One of the things I would recommend to everybody that on, um, <clears throat> on Remax to update your profile, put down your different accolades and awards, uh, the communities you serve, the more information you give, the more likely you're going to get uh, referrals from the Remax network. Um, also, I found that the Remax network, the referral thing is a little challenging. So when, if I don't have somebody in a certain area, we'll cheat a little bit and we'll go into Zillow and we'll put in uh, the town and then we'll put Remax and then we'll go from the profiles on Zillow when we're giving out referrals. Um, Patrick's been very successful getting giving commercial referrals. Um, I'm gonna segue to him, but then I'll jump back. Patrick, explain what you do when it comes to the commercial referrals. Yes, yeah, so thank you, Chopper. Just to touch on uh, the commercial sector as far as getting referrals go, first I would start with your owners, landlords, and tenants. If you're working with any landlords right now and you've leased a space for them and you're working on a space for them, ask to see if they know anybody else who's got vacancy because the reality is that they probably do or maybe they have another building with some vacancy. Uh, there's There are a bunch of single property landowners out there, but there are also multiple, multiple property landowners. So if you can get hooked up with one that owns one than, more than one building, sometimes it can turn into to multiple spaces or, or availability to lease. Uh, same thing with owners. You know, you do a deal with an owner, ask if they know anybody else who's looking to dispose of any assets. Uh, maybe they have buyers looking for a specific requirement. Sometimes you do a deal with a, a seller and they tell you they have somebody who is looking to buy something similar to what you just sold. Well, now you can kind of start to build your database, get a list of good properties for them, and you're just going to continue to build the pipeline. If you give these commercial clients good service, they are going to want to stick with you uh, because there's just such a lack of um, sameness and professionalism in the commercial industry that sometimes working with somebody who's detail-oriented and 
you know, somebody who's going to follow up and answer all your questions is a breath of fresh air for the for these uh, owners and buyers. Um, also, I would like to touch on this has been big for us is staying in touch with some bigger commercial brokers out there, people who work for CBRE, Cushman and Wakefield, et cetera, et cetera. If you can get hooked up with some of them, there's a lot of deals that come across their desk that are just too small for some of those companies to take. You know what? A lot of those brokers have told us that they'd rather get something out of the deal and send it to us because they know we're going to take good care of them. Um, so we were lucky enough to have a nice office building referred to us here in Oakland and we found a tenant. The commercial broker didn't even ask for a referral, but we sent them one anyway because we wanted to do the right thing. Um, so anytime you're in touch with a commercial broker, I say one, get their cell phone, two, put it in your phone and keep in touch with them. If you got their cell phone, they're going to respect you. Uh, one thing that Chopper has said, and it rings very true in the commercial industry, is that LoopNet is like your Zillow and CoStar is like the MLS. So if you're reaching out to these brokers through LoopNet, it's like you're reaching out to, you know, the consumers reaching out through Zillow. If you're reaching out to them through CoStar or you have their cell phone, they're going to be much more inclined to, to answer your phone call and get back to you. And that's how you start to build a good relationship. One of the other ways that we've been getting a lot of commercial referrals are from residential realtors. You know, um, Rob, you'd appreciate this because we give uh, little lectures and stuff how, you know, certain individuals getting into commercial can affect the E&O. You're better off to refer it out. And so many of you are dealing with, with homeowners with, you know, multi-million dollar houses and what have you. Got to ask them how they amass that kind of wealth. Oh, I own XYZ company, you know, and, and we found a lot of times that their, their, um, their children don't want to take over the businesses. So we not only do uh, commercial property sales, we also sell uh, businesses. We're doing pretty good in the restaurant business. We got the chopper breakfast wrap, chopper tuna melt, chopper hot plate, chopper hot dog, chopper cheeseburger. My intention before I die is to be a full menu. But it's very important if you're if you just specialize in residential and that's fine, you need to give it to a qualified commercial practitioner. Don't take a chance and jeopardize your license and your insurance. You know, it, it's like when we do the lectures and stuff, we're like, you know, we talk about um, gross modified leases, profit and loss, uh, pro forma, you know cash on cash terms that you know more than likely a residential realtor is not familiar with it so we get a so, lot of referrals there. go ahead Ron. so chopper you also have um I, I think a lot of our residential agents don't realize and maybe they don't even ask you know if they own any commercial real estate or you know i'm seeing more and more people being self-employed when i talk to our lenders and when they're self-employed, they're more likely to be owning the building they're in. So just by asking those questions might be able to generate, you know, additional income opportunities to refer commercial business, right? Yes. Um, and, and I know, um, you know, Patrick, you talked about networking with like the commercial agents that may not want to do the smaller commercial deals. That would be, you know, applicable to our, our commercial agents. But um, networking in general, I think, um, is something that is, is a huge opportunity. Um, Chopper, I don't want to downplay, but you go to the elite retreat, like most of the time, right? Yes. And you want to just tell everybody what that is and, and how you work that? Well, that's the top performers uh, throughout the country. Um, I think that's chair, chairman and above, right? Yeah, chairman, Titan, Diamond, and Pinnacle. And they share the different ideas and thoughts. Uh, it's a good networking thing. There's a lot of referrals um, that are available there. People give out a lot of tchotchkes to get your attention, you know, but uh, that's where I get the names and the numbers. I mean, and, and we all, um, you know, if you're not using a QR code with all your information, you're doing yourself a disservice. I don't know about you, but I got fat thumbs and it drives me crazy when a realtor sends me a picture of their business card. Listen, I destroy those emails because my thumbs hit everything. 
So that's why I got like the QR code. And there's um there's another one that a lot of them use at Elite Retreat. I forget the name of Pat. What's the thing I used? Do you remember? It was about dot. The the um what the hell is it? We use Blink. Blink, Blink. that's Blink. it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, David. With Blink, you can uh, you can have a QR code as well. I think that's what you used when we met Chopper in Vegas. Yes, yes. I don't use the Blink with those people outside the uh, Rematch Network. I have a regular QR I send them. And you'd be and, amazed how many people don't know how to line it up. And uh, while uh, while we're talking about the uh, conferences, uh, David, do you go to anything besides R4 to network? I go to as many conferences as my schedule allows. Uh, hello from Sarasota, guys. Um, so coming up, we have Luxury Forum in NOLA, uh, June 20, 20th and 21st. New Orleans, we have uh, the Luxury Forum. I don't know if anybody's been, uh, but um, that is a group of agents that are often referring each other uh, just the last couple of years now with Remax, I've noticed, you know, they bond together. Uh, we connect at every conference um, <clears throat> and we support each other huge. Uh, when you talk about giving swag to each other at different conferences, uh, we look forward to creating stuff that we know our friends are going to like that are uh, in every, in every single state. So it's been huge for my business to, uh, to think about what people can remember uh, the Haller group by and also, uh, you know, that we're in the, the West Coast of Florida specific. Uh, but um, yeah, like Chopper said, go to as many conferences as you can, build these friendships, and, you know, the referrals will come from there. Okay. Um, and one other, um, you go to Luxury and R4. Are there any other ones that you've gone to, David, that have well, generated some business? And then I'll come I've, back. I've been invited, I, you know, when I was at Sotheby's and I was coming over to Remax. And leaving the development division, running that, I went. I was invited to the elite retreat. Um, I was invited to a broker owner events, and that's really one of the reasons why I'm here on this call is because Kelly and I became friends at a broker owner event. Even though I'm not a broker owner of a Remax, I own a brokerage in Dominican Republic, and I've been asked if I wanted to buy a, a Remax in the past. And meeting Kelly there, you know, led me to meeting you guys. And one is swag. Swag is give out, uh, handout stuff, right? Yeah, but I noticed things that people spend a little bit more money on that are a little bit more about their location or about themselves are interesting. One thing I noticed is people that give uh, crap gets thrown in the garbage real quick. So uh, I'm very picky. If I'm going to hold a, uh, a mug, it's going to, you know... I'd rather spend more money and give fewer out and people are going to remember it. They're going to use it. It's going to be in their boat. It's going to be in their car. It's going to be in their RV on their side by side, whatever it may be that they're into. Um, and people are going to ask, you know, who, who's that? What's that? Why do you use that? Uh, most other stuff just gets thrown out. But one of the things I notice people doing going away from their own personal brand and team on the swag is just giving something else. That's solely Remax, like a Remax trucker hat or a Remax towel. I got this year and my partner, Alex, <clears throat> he was at a pool recently. Um, you know, it's like uh, his kids are going to this community pool that's uh, very popular. I guess they're, uh, they're doing some uh, swimming lessons and uh, people come up and say, so you're with Remax and it's powerful, you know, and that has nothing to do with the Haller Group team brand or uh, anything that we created. That was a, a girl we, we know very well in Orange Beach, Alabama. I'm born and raised in South Florida. <clears throat> I've been to Alabama. I had never heard of Orange Beach. Now I know Orange Beach Renee, and she's the go-to, you know, in Orange Beach. And she gave away a Remax hat and a Remax towel. And we've used them a number of times since, uh, what is that, since February. And we've actually started conversations that have led to relationships. And, you know, it'll, it'll turn into business. And... Um... Uh, this would be to Patrick, uh, David, or Chopper. Do you find that you know you're getting more referrals from certain areas, and then do you um, give them special attention as far as you know maybe mailing to them once a year, twice a year, touching base with them? 
you know, for example, maybe on the west coast of Florida, maybe you get from Illinois, from New Jersey, New York, um, and, you know, Chopper, I don't know where most of your commercial referrals come from, but if you have any input on that. Well, we have a process set up that whoever refers us, we reach out to them right away. Emily will send them a thank you from a Starbucks card. And then we keep them um, up to date during the process where we're at. We don't just take it and leave it and send them a check, though we used to back in the day. But our team's more, more established now. They got the right people in the right places. So we have like what we call our own referral program of acknowledgments, you know, with some gifts and things like that. Yeah, great. We identified a few a few items. Um, we used to send Starbucks cards as well. Um, we've we've identified a few items that are unique that um, represent our brand. We send them, and then I try to make a weekend of it, or uh, at least two days. I get on a plane, I'll fly to that market, and I'll build relationships with that team leader and his broker or her broker owner, and figure out who I need to know so that they know that we're the only team that they need to be referring their entire office to. Because if you think about it, what's a flight to Toledo, Ohio, Columbus, Ohio, uh, or to you know go to Michigan. But meanwhile, every one of those agents' clients are buying a property in Southwest Florida in the next year to three years. So why not let them get set up to prepare their clients and to connect them with us earlier and be proactive, not reactive. A, that's a great idea. You know, I got to tell you, when I had a furniture factory, <clears throat> I would fly clients into the factory and tour them and show them what we did. And sales would double in those locations. And to what you were saying before, I, I'm going to quote the show doctor, that 98% of the things given out at any kind of trade show are thrown in the garbage. So like David says, the swag or what I like to call tchotchkes have to, have to stand out, you know? It has to make a difference. But we uh, we yeah. were all informed by a buddy of ours from Pensacola. Come and see him and, and listen to his spiel, and he'll give you a um, Jason Panos. He'll give you a uh, a charger, and everybody came up to him, and it was it was unique. And everybody left our four that was there that had heard of him with a charger that you know, you know it's wireless. He had to have spent good money and time to design it, and it was a lot of effort put into it. But everybody that got one of those now has him as their referral partner, and I, it's it's definitely a commitment. But if you're serious about the business, you're gonna you're gonna change that mindset and do something like that. And um, <clears throat> do you go to any other conferences that aren't Remax? I know. Um, some of us on the call might be members of CRS. Anybody a member of CRS? I am, but I go to uh, Inman and I go to Zillow conferences. In fact, Patrick's coming with, me, coming with me to the Vegas one in August to Inman. What I like about the Inman conference, it's, it's, uh, it's not about the brand, you know, and uh, there, there you make some good connections too. Listen, it's like anything else you do. To make the effort to go to put out your hand and meet somebody, that makes the difference. You're just going to walk around and look at stuff. So that's up to you. You know. I think people don't go to these places with the intention. A lot of them just go and show up. So when I was younger and I was running, the, you know, the development division of a number of different brokerages, I learned, you know. It's not just a matter of getting dressed, putting on a jacket, smiling and shaking hands. It's about leaving a lasting impression. To leave a lasting impression, if you don't have a personality like some people, you really need to think ahead and, and figure out who's gonna be in that room and where you need to be and what you need to do. So one of the things we started doing uh, at any conference, we, we have time to plan out in advance that we're going to. Uh, for example, the next one is Luxury Forum, will be to create a specific, uh, event it could be knowing that there's going to be a, a group of people i want to i want to host so in new orleans we're going to get together and have you know a bourbon and uh, and cigars but that'll attract say it attracts 10 
10 gentlemen or 10 women that like to smoke cigars, those people will never forget that I hosted them, that I, I made sure that we had specific types of cigars, that we talked about the different types of bourbon or whiskeys, whatever it may be to connect with certain groups. Then another, another day I'll host a lunch and I'll get people away from the conference and out of that hotel and away from the masses so that they can understand what it is that I can offer. Very different than any other team leader or, or you know agent in Florida and let them know that we're the people to call, no matter what they need in Florida, call me first and we'll connect. If we can't help you, we'll connect you with the right agent in any town or any market. And Chop, um, Chopper, Pat, uh, Tom, or uh, and David, do you um, do email, text, um, like, like what's the um, stay in touch status? And does it depend upon, you know, the probability of them being able to refer to you? Like, you know, there's probably not a tremendous amount of people from San Diego coming to New Jersey or maybe even to, you know, uh, Western, Southwest Florida. But, you know, how do you decide the intensity of keeping in touch? So what I do is I, I realize quickly, you know, what is the probability? Who's going to send referrals? Who's going to be, you know, a fan? You know, we talk about raving fans a lot in this business. And depending on, you know, their specific situation, you know, one goes into more getting messages. I have a reminder on CRM about who I'm going to message on Facebook, who I'm going to message on Instagram or LinkedIn, who's going to get an email, who's going to get a call, and who do I start with a hi, hello, how are you on a text message that can lead to a phone call. On the way to the office this morning, uh, I spent about an hour on the fall with, uh, uh, an hour on the phone with a number of referral partners from North Carolina to Ohio and Michigan. I think it was three, three calls. I woke up and I knew I had to talk to one of them. And because I had a good call, it, it did something in my head and said, you know what, reach out to this one. He had mentioned something recently about somebody to follow up. So it's waking up with intent for any of this when we talk about referrals, but the, ref but the relationships, you know, it's these people become our friends and uh, the more they get to know the real you and you get away from the actual business, the more likely when they hear the word Southwest Florida, which encompasses a huge area from Naples to Tampa, you know, uh, they're probably going to know somebody that wants something I can offer them. Uh, and because we're building that rapport, because we've built this connection that's deeper than just a commission, you know, so many people just think transactionally, but you think so much more with, with the relationship and make them feel special uh, and just check in. I can't tell you how many people I picked up the phone and made a hundred phone calls yesterday because it was Mother's Day and I did it as fast as possible and I made the, the calls as short as possible. But before I did anything else with my family, my friends, uh, Mother's Day brunch, work around the, 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 the house. <clears throat> I call these people and, you know, it's going to, it's going to come back to me quick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, let me, let me uh, ask you this question. Uh, how many outbound referrals did you place? And then David, you're probably getting a lot more inbounds, but you, you can mind sharing like, the past 12 months, what that looks like. Can't hear you. How many outbound referrals were you able to place in the past 12 months? And how many inbound ones would you say you've gotten in 12 months? So there's, you know, every single referral is not ready to, to you know, to buy or sell right away, but most of them are within 90 days, I would say I get to work with. Um, I would say between 20, 25 and 30 referrals inbound and outbound. There's, there's two things that, that I think um, I could say, I would say I probably sent uh, eight to 10 outbound, but um, it's not just sending a referral. It's the recommend it's recommending people uh, that have asked on different pages, whether it's real estate mastermind, the Remax referral page, or another dozen that I'm a part of, it's making sure people realize you're active on there and you're, you're going to, as, as long as you're free and you're able and it pops up that you're notified and you can drop somebody's name and say, listen, I've worked with this guy, Chopper. I've worked with this guy, Patrick. They are great. So that's the start. Then I send a direct message and I say, listen, 
you're going to get a, 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 a ton of names. You're going to hear about this guy, Brian, or this girl, you know, Tracy. But trust me, you need to get on the phone with this guy. If he calls answer, he's going to be the guy for you. Nobody's going to be better than that. That personal connection off the public forum and private, it's a game changer. Um, you know, recently I realized about a dozen people did that for me and I was really touched. Um, when somebody takes time out of their day where they may, might not get anything from it immediately and says, listen, the Haller group, David, you got to connect with them. David and Alex, their team, they're amazing. They're the ones that are genuine. They just took care of my mother or my father or my brother. They'll take care of your client like family. That's priceless. So get back to that personal touch. So you said 25 to 30 inbound and eight to 10 out. And are a lot of the inbound ones, like the one that I gave you when I was door knocking were like a year out? I can't, I can't hear you. I said, I said, um, are a lot of the inbound referrals in the Florida market, you know, some of them are like a year out, like the one I was door knocking. Can you hear me? It's, uh, I have, it seems like I have a good service. Patrick, I don't know. Patrick, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So my, my question was, um, how many of the inbound referrals are like an extended period, like maybe 90 days or a year out that you get? So most of my inbound referrals, they're ready to go. Okay. Um, there's all types of, there's all types of situations. There's referrals that are, I feel a little bit more like cold leads that you need to warm up, but that's typically not what I'm referred. I'm typically referred people that are getting into the marketplace within a week to 90 days maximum. Um, I think one of the reasons why I close a lot of referrals, it, it also is good for me personally, not to think about you know, a year out type of client versus somebody that's re ready to buy or sell in the next 90 days, because I can get onto a marketing plan or a strategy for that client uh, on a more, you know, on a, on a much shorter time. Okay. Um... And then um, Chopper, uh, are you getting more commercial referrals from your networking or you get everything? It's, it's a mix. It's a mix. We probably gave out about seven last year and incoming was, what do you think, Pat? 16, 17? I was going to say at least 10, probably closer to 15 if you count some resi in there. Yeah. Okay. Listen, so basically treat people the way you want to be treated. Do the next right thing, you know. Unfortunately, I didn't know David, and I gave I gave a a lead to uh, to someone out in his area, and uh, they dropped the ball. I followed up my client, I'm like, oh, they were too busy for me. I I hate that. I hear that. I want to flip out. So I hear that a lot from a lot of uh, top brokers from around the country, around the world, actually, since coming on to Remax that they've had a number of referrals sent to this market and also to the East coast of Florida. And so many uh, top producers, they dropped the ball because they gave one of their top buyers agents, this, this referral. And they didn't realize that referral was the broker owner that sent its father, mother, sister, daughter. And so it wasn't just a person. It was a family member of that important Remax, you know, per, uh, family, and now that person's blacklist, right? So I recently just closed the deal that another Remax uh, broker about an hour south of me dropped the ball on. And it's like, you don't want to, you know, you don't want to talk poorly about somebody, but, you know, you really need to prioritize this. And if you're going to be passionate about it, about taking referrals, make sure that they're going to get done and they're going to get done really, really well. It's your brand. Yeah, because you got to remember when you're referring, you're giving out the most valuable asset in your life, your name and your reputation. So yeah. like I flipped out and I, well, I don't want to say what I said, but anyway, um, no, they're vitally important, but every file is a slam dunk. I mean, it's a no brainer, you know? And, and, but, and, and Chopper, how, how much incoming referral business do you get? Like when you revenue from when you send leads out, you said you gave out about how many last year? Seven or eight? Out, we gave out seven, I think. And, and, and what's the average, um, referral fee coming in three four grand yeah at least sometimes they're a little bit more you know so so that's like a nice little supplement to your business right i mean it yeah. uh can certainly help out with 
quite a bit. Um, and I know, um, I think, Patrick, are you CCIM? No, I've done the first part of CCIM. I've not completed it yet, but it's something I've been working on. Chopper, are you CCIM or no? Oh, that's Patrick. We got Patrick? Him. We're both ACPs. What is ACP? Accredited Commercial okay. Practitioner. Okay. It was, it was made by uh, Remax. Okay. So um, thank you for uh, sharing that. Um, a couple other um, couple other designations that um, you might want to consider. I know um, a lot of people, and this might be a Colleen question. Do you know many people who are CRS from NAR? If Colleen's uh, yeah, yeah, there's a lot of CRS. And a lot of times when somebody's looking to do a referral, uh, they'll strictly look for uh, a CRS. Because I've noticed and CRS that has a huge referral service in itself. Because I've noticed, I noticed many of the people that have CRS uh, only refer to CRS. So they'll, exactly. they'll, they'll look in Remax and then they'll look for the CRS. And that's how they'll make that outbound referral. And then when it's coming in, they expect the same to happen. So I'd say that's one of the strongest um, loyalty uh, certifications out there. CCIM is pretty pretty good. I think um, Mark Orham's a big CCIM person, uh, luxury certifications. And then um, this is one that you know maybe is going to be uh, good for listings is senior uh, real estate specialist. Anybody have that? SRES? Yeah, most of our team does. Because, um, you know, a lot of seniors will be the sellers, right? And um, you need to handle seniors uh, in most cases a little bit different, right? Hey, Rob, you want to yes. drop that? You want to drop that term senior now? It's more of mature adult. But that's not what it's called. It's not N A R E S. <laughs> I know, but they should really change it. In fact, it's ironic because they talk about it in the course, and uh, they definitely need to 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 change that because uh, you know, mature adults. Okay, mature adult real estate specialist. Yeah. We'll have our own designation there, Chopper. There you go. Um, and then I, I know. Um, David mentioned the word, which I, I, I think I see in the way that you um, go to your conventioning, which is you have intent, right? You don't just go there to take notes and get information. You go there for networking and you have the intent of drumming up new businesses. I assume that's accurate, Chopper, based upon the fact that everybody I know. Well, you know, we get involved. I got friends, unfortunately, just go for the massages and the dinners. But yeah, I go there with purpose. I've been to so many conferences, not just in real estate, but in my other industry, that I don't know when I'm in the plane what I'm going to get from it. It's on the flight back that I realize what I learned, who I met, you know. And um... when, uh, when, excuse me, when I used to go to the conferences, I always I always made it a point. This because I'm from Florida, sit at a table with people from New York, New Jersey, Chicago, because I knew that's where my referrals would be coming from. Yeah, so I uh, I was actually talking to one of our lenders down in Florida, and they said that they were working on trying to get a box put onto the uh, mortgage application asking if you're a veteran. And that would identify whether or not they could take advantage of a VA loan because a lot of people who were eligible, um, they weren't asked the question if they were a veteran, they just were given a regular loan. They might've got FHA and paid MIP because the lender didn't ask that question. Now, I mentioned this because I think whenever we're working with a buyer, seller, renter, landlord, we ought to ask them if they control any decisions on other real estate, okay? Because a lot of the people that are buying in the areas where we are, and um, I wanna say New Jersey probably has four or five of the wealthiest town, towns in the country, and Florida probably has three times that amount, uh, if not more. And these are the people that control a lot of the commercial real estate. If it's in corporate America, they might be making the decisions on big corporations 
um, real estate decisions. And if they're a, um, if they are a entrepreneur and they're self-employed, there's a good chance that they own their own commercial real estate. So um, I would venture to say that we get so excited about selling a, a $3 million house in Chatham that we forget to ask them if they own any other real estate or they control any commercial real estate that we can help them with. When you, when you, I see you're shaking your head, Patrick. I mean, you see this, like in Bergen County, there's a lot of wealth and people control a lot of other real estate. Absolutely. And I would say it can certainly start from more of a local and a small standpoint, and you can kind of grow it into something that becomes bigger. Maybe you're working with a client that happens to work with, <laughs> for a, a franchisee. And they tell you, hey, we're looking to open a store in this town. You know, now you've got a connection to work with the next franchisee. And if you do a good job for them on that one, it's only going to lead to future ones. Now, not only are you uh, helping them find their house, sell their home, now you're a partner in their business also. That's what I say when I'm helping these people find new spaces or trying to lease out spaces. I'm becoming a partner in your business, whether that's you're in the business of selling widgets or you're in the business of being a landlord. So a, um, another takeaway would be to ask everybody that you're working with if you can help them with any other real estate, right? Do they own any investment property? Do they own any mixed use property that you might be able to help them out with leasing or selling? Okay. Another great question would be, you know, uh, had you had any thoughts about investing in real estate? Okay, and investing could be, you know, just buying a residential property or it could be, you know, buying a uh, very sophisticated commercial property. And we don't need to be intimidated by all the commercial terms if we have the right people to refer to. I mean, um, Patrick, have you come across some agents in the commercial um, space that probably ethically shouldn't be doing business because they don't understand it? Um, unfortunately, yes, I do see it as something that's becoming more common is you are getting people to list properties that, that really shouldn't be. Um, I do believe it is in the code of ethics that says, that, you know, if you're not qualified to list, sell or rent a certain asset type, you really shouldn't be taking that listing. Um, it's just better to refer it out rather than to risk your license. Send it to somebody who knows what they're doing. You guys are going to build a relationship. And the reality is, is that person may send you a referral back before you know it. So don't think of it as you giving up the listing. Think of it as you, you're going to get something where otherwise you're, you're going to list and sell something you otherwise not, might not be qualified to do so. And that can really leave yourself open to, uh, to litigation. And by the way, the dirty little secret is that internationally, Remax is number 12 or 13 when it comes to commercial real estate. Uh, Remax doesn't do a good job of promoting itself on the on um, on the commercial side. Gotcha. <clears throat> so um, the uh, the mindset of asking questions to try to help people is something I think is is a missed opportunity, and the amount of um, influence that our buyers have. I think is grossly under underestimated. Um, what, you know, what, what's the biggest challenge from somebody who's uh, not one of our panelists on making a referral? Like what's one of the most frustrating points why you don't make more of them? I'm gonna say honestly, the, honestly, they forget to ask. They forget to mm -hmm. ask where someone is going. When they set when they sell their house, they forget the opportunity of being able to say, "Oh, well, well, you're going to North Carolina. I know a great person there that can take care of you the same way I would." They don't ask. And and sometimes, Colleen, do you ever hear from your your uh, team there that they get frustrated because they maybe send it to the wrong referral partner and they don't communicate, follow up, and close? Um. I haven't really seen that a lot because I tell the agents to interview whoever they're referring to because it's an extension of themselves. 
So they need to know who they're going to refer business to before they refer it. Uh, I um, I would agree with you on that. And maybe that's the tip that's missing with some of the referrals here where agents come in and say, I made a referral out to the Midwest or wherever it was, and the person's not following up. Um, I, I don't know what's going on or even worse, your client that you referred out to said that was a bad referral, right? That, that always comes across poorly. So uh, vetting out your um, referral partner is definitely uh, high on the list to a sustainable referral business. Um, and thinking and thinking out of the box, one of the largest referrals we ever received uh, was out of California. And it was for a listing in California that a realtor in Florida sent the California uh, uh, person the information for the listing. Uh, it was a you know movie star's home. We received a fifty-four thousand dollar referral. Unbelievable. That because big yeah because this agent took the time to ask these, she, her son's an attorney in the entertainment business, took the time to ask, is anybody moving anywhere? Uh, is anybody looking for a home? She put it out there and she ended up with uh, with that business. I think That's David sort of thinks that way too. I, I Listening to him talk, it's like anywhere, everywhere. <laughs> I, I think that you have to be locally based and globally connected. One of the things that representing so many beautiful luxury developments taught me was to collaborate with agents. One of the things that a lot of agents in our industry right now are just learning are how to connect and how to truly <clears throat> work together. Most people's mindset was always, I'd love to do both sides, me, me, me. I'd like to control the transaction. Mr. Seller, listen, if I have my buyer, not only will I credit you a point, but you know what? it'll be easier for me to, to close the deal where I've seen that backfire many times for an agent and they lose the listing, they lose the buyer and they're off with nothing. You know, I, I think that if you have an agent in every major market, which everybody can do, I'm, I'm, I'm doing something that is not brain surgery. I'm doing something that's intentional, something that takes me a little bit of time every single day and something that now I'm known for, which is referrals. But I think a lot of agents I've said this a number of times. I've said this on panels. They are so focused in their box. They have their 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 wife or their they have their their husband. They have their children. They have the school. They have their deals. They have their team, and that's their world. You know, they go on a couple of vacations. They're not thinking with the mindset of <clears throat> if I recommend more people, if I send more referrals, if I'm actively asking the right questions to my existing clients and my past clients, which should already hear from me more. Do they have friends and family that, you know, are moving somewhere else? I mean, you mentioned a big commission, a referral that came into the company from California. I sent, when I was with Douglas Elliman, I sent a Douglas Elliman agent that had a team that sat next to, you know, Frederick and, and uh, Tracy Tudor. I sent this one agent a massive listing uh, from a plastic surgeon here in Miami and that was a that was a wonderful thing because not only did I get a huge referral fee back, but that one client turned into a multiple client referral source for him. And every single person that that guy worked with, he continued to send me a referral fee. That was huge. All that money went right back into my own marketing account. And I've used, I mean, I use a story all the time because you just never know. But most people won't push and ask these questions. You're sitting at somebody's house. You're about to list their, their biggest asset. You know, make them feel comfortable. Make them feel, you know, like family and, and tell them you can help them no matter where they're looking to move or their son or daughter is just, you know, got a new job. Why aren't you a part of that journey as well? You know, so it's all about communication. It's all about that connection. And at the moment they feel that you're the trusted real estate advisor to them, they should call you no matter what the need, what the asset class, where, and they want your opinion. They want, they value your, your advice because you are that real estate advisor. You're advising them, constantly advising them. Everybody says a realtor, 
but I'm a global real estate advisor. Why? Because I have connections globally to help them with any of their needs. And um, <clears throat> David, this um, Friday, I'm going to spend uh, Wednesday afternoon and Thursday coming up with a list of um, five viable investment properties in Southeast Florida, in Central and North Jersey. And I want to share with the group how I basically filter through all the garbage to come up with a good investment. And this is going to allow us to have conversations to be your total real estate specialist, not just your um, buying your first and second home specialist. Okay, because um, I really think, you know, the public needs to have a simplified answer to what real estate investing means and how it can change your life. Um, you know, how many people have we come across in our careers that real estate was the staple of their entire wealth, right? Maybe if their business tripped up, they were able to take a home equity loan or sell a piece of real estate to get back on track, or they've held real estate and it's made them an extremely wealthy individual. Those are discussions that aren't right for everybody, but I think everybody should be exposed to that if that's a decision that they wanna entertain, right? Because why should somebody else um, take that from us or why should our clients be in the, in the dark about what these opportunities are? And, um, you know, investing in real estate, even in this market, you know, is still pretty, uh, there's still some pretty reasonable deals out there and then if rates turn uh, favorably for us, they can become a lot more profitable. And over time, they just get better when prices go up and rents go up. So these are all different opportunities for um, referrals, growing our business. Um, uh, you know, it's just, it's something that, you know, has to be intentional and going to a convention just to you know take notes and learn and pass out cards without doing anything is probably not going to get you anywhere near the result you want from the um, standpoint of growing your business through referrals, right? No, you need to be intentional in all aspects of this business. Uh, stop being you know reactive and start thinking about your business like you're the CEO because that's truly what you are. You know, you need to wake up with with a plan uh, and referrals are such a great way to get your business going to another level. Um, I, I see it all the time. I just saw three new realtors opening up an office down the hallway, by the way, Rob, from Orlando. They're expanding over here to uh, to Venice and Sarasota. And I'm, uh, I'm just thinking like, you know, they have there are people coming from Orlando now over to Sarasota, they're telling me earlier. But yeah, intention. I mean, I have already an event planned for New Orleans. I just decided last minute we're going to be going. And, uh, you know, I have, um, I've just seen so many opportunities come from it. And you need to, uh, you need to go and you need to, you need to have a plan. So many of the, the best referrals that I've gotten come from not just being at these events, but, you know, hosting a party in, in what, like, for example, we went to a number of private parties in Vegas in the Skylofts and the people that were there are the people that you need to know, you know, whether it's Nick Bailey, whether it's a, a, a broker owner from Italy, when was the last time you went to Italy? And if you were there on vacation, <laughs> did you stop by a Remax office? Did you meet one agent? Maybe you did. But I guarantee you, you don't know all the agents that I know now in Italy because I was at that party or I was supporting a, the Gay Alliance. And I got this little pin and I said, you know what? I support people from every gender and all walks of life and all backgrounds. And But these people have sent me referrals. These people have asked to come visit. These people think that we're you know, best friends. And, and that's what is so important to build those relationships. And um, another thing that I would recommend that I don't know if Chopper, you or David do, but um, I guess, uh, you know, David, you flew out to areas for where incoming referrals are coming from. But if you're sitting here in North Jersey or if you're in, you know, um, maybe you're in um, 
<clears throat> Palm Beach uh, County, maybe a lot of your referrals are coming from Miami and Broward and you need to network with some people in those areas that can refer you your next clients or in New Jersey, you know, a lot of our people are coming from Brooklyn and Staten Island. So, right. So this week, um, Alex, I think he's on the call. He might be driving, but this week, my partner, Alex Stolier, if you guys see him on there, reach out and say hello. Uh, he spent the week in New York. You know, he's licensed in New York and he services all of Brooklyn and Staten Island. People say, well, how is he doing, you know, Florida and, and, and up there? Well, he has a home, he has his office. And at the end of the day, you know, you're getting the same, the same support that I, you know, that we offer down here up there. I was on a call with you, Rob, what, a few days ago. And a nice woman, that's one of your agents said, I don't know who I would send to the next county in Florida on the East Coast. And it blew my mind not to, to, you know, to put her down, but how do you not have an agent 30 minutes from your house maximum away with our own, our own Remax Select? Forget about outside to another Remax brokerage or to another brand. And I just realized it's, that's what I meant, what I talked about before, how everybody's so busy on their own business or their own relationships, but they're not, they're not taking the time to build these new ones and to, to have these partnerships, you know, even close by within the same state. Really uh, a great point. Uh, I'm putting the, our, uh, our guests contact uh, phone numbers in the uh, text box. If you have anything to reach out to them with. Um, so if you can, you know, look at where your business is coming from, maybe make a connection and have a feeder pipeline. Um, if you're in North Jersey and they're coming from Staten Island or Brooklyn or Manhattan, you know, talk to some agents over there. I think you'd be surprised at how few agents have made that effort to, um, say, Hey, I'm here to help. Okay. And if you have anybody coming here. And, you know, don't dismiss it until you try it. It doesn't take a whole lot of effort. If David Holler is willing to fly to uh, Columbus, Ohio or Toledo, um, it's not that big of a stretch to go to Staten Island or Brooklyn or to call there. Anything you guys need in Staten Island, Alex has been a top producer there for the last 10 years. He's there right now. Um, you know, his information's in the chat as well. Um, but guys, feel free to reach out to any of us Chopper, Patrick, myself, Rob, we're all easy to communicate with. You can send me a DM. You can send me a call. Call me anytime. I'm here to here to help. We're, we're a family. I believe in this REMAX family so much, and um, we're looking forward to working together. Yeah, make every effort to keep it in-house. Keep it among the REMAX. Absolutely. I mean, if, every, if, if everybody gave out six referrals and three or four of those closed, just think about what reciprocity would mean to us for incoming business. It's, it's a lot of value. It's money left on the table. Um, you know, uh, and, and also, you know, always look at things from the lens of, you know, not just, am I going to get an ultimate, you know, buyer, but how do I get, how do I get a referral source that keeps on giving? Um, David, have you had any referrals that have given you more than two or three during your career? Any out-of-state people? I have referral partners that give me more than two or three in a year. When something works, I look at it and I say, why does this person send me four? This person sent me one or two, or these people are supportive and recommend me, but they've never, they've never had a client. Um, yeah, those are the ones that I get out on the plane for. And those are the, that's the reason why, you know, they know me at the Delta Lounge so well. No, because I, I believe so much in relationships. It's evident as I, I sit, repeat myself over and over, even right now on the call. Relationships are the key to success in this business. But what a difference it is if you got yourself on a plane, you travel to say I come up to New Jersey and I start to sit down in each of your offices or each of, you know, any of your homes and you get to know me, you're really going to, going to, you're not going to forget me, trust me. So you're going to be thinking of me when it comes to Florida, not just Sarasota, Venice, Northport, the West Coast, Naples, Tampa, but the East Coast, we have, you know, an office over there. 
I'm going to be that person that's in your head for Florida real estate. And you're going to say, listen, I know this guy really well. I know his partner. They have a really great team. This is their background. We've done, we've done a number of deals. That confidence, that experience with me in your market is going to, is going to translate to many, many more deals in the future for myself. And they're going to end up with a nice check in the mail. And they'll be like, you know what? Who else is there? David's done three deals for me. Every time I get two grand, 5,000, 10,000, he knows what he's doing. Why would I call anybody else? So make yourself that expert and, and make yourself known that you are ready to help anybody with a referral and, and become their best, you know, their best referral partner. And um, just um, a little plug is uh, you took me out to a couple of communities out there in uh, Southwest Florida, and they were just amazing um, in terms of lifestyle and, um, uh, you know, price point was reasonable, right? Um, the so one, we, the, the we one went that we one. went to, go ahead, share, yeah, we went share to, with the group. We went to a place called Grand Park, which is in Welland Park. Uh, one of the fastest growing multi-generational communities in the entire country behind the villages and behind Lakewood Ranch. <clears throat> Lakewood Ranch, another community we service about 30 minutes from my home. Uh, we have all price points from $400,000 where I'm just putting up one today for 464 for uh, a beautiful two bedroom, you know, terrace unit on, on the ninth hole of a you know, Arnold Palmer golf course in a beautiful country club in Lakewood Ranch to, you know, four or five million in the concessions country club. We have so many different options, but these are communities where people all have a golf cart, whether they play golf or not. And they go to listen to a live band on a Friday and they have cornholes and events and they have every restaurant and they open up schools. They have everything that you need in one place. And you're still close to Sarasota Airport. You're still close to so many other things, the cultural, uh, the beach. We have six beaches within, you know, 25 minutes. And, and David, well, Welland Park is not a gated community, right? It's an open community or is it so, going to be gated? So in Welland Park, you have a number of HOAs with over 10 different developers. And each of those developments are private, right? So each of them are gated. Um, but then just outside of Welland Park, for example, I bought 10 miles south because I saw the future and I said, I need to buy land and I need to buy real estate around Welland Park. Welland Park, you're going to have a couple different fees that are added to it. You know, not just the HOA fee, but a master plan community fee and higher taxes. So that's not necessarily for every investor. It is for some, uh, but there's also, you know, property like I, I bought three acres 10 miles away for something that's a, a third of the property I, I own. <laughs> In the East Coast, in Boca Raton, so there is there's something for everybody over here. Uh, I definitely would love to host you guys and show you Welland Park, show you Lakewood Ranch, and show you what's surrounding it. Um, the lifestyle it's it's priceless and it's 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 very reasonable. You know, obviously we have less taxes here. We have this amazing weather, but the beaches in this in the Gulf Coast are are unique. Most of you guys from New Jersey and and New York, you come down and you go to Boca, you go to Miami, Fort Lauderdale. You know what it's like on the East Coast, but the West Coast is exploding. So much opportunity. Uh, a lot of my clients right now actually just got a call this morning. I'm going to start working on uh, <clears throat> a deal for an agent from Remax in Colorado. He's in uh, Fort Collins, Colorado. And he saw a deal I did for one of his colleagues, one of their clients. And he's like, you know what? It sounds good. I want the same. What is that? Five minutes from Welland Park. It's a, uh, you know, an Airbnb and it's going to be $600,000. It rents for $300 a night. It's a golf cart ride to the beach. You have Venice, you have the, the strip in downtown Venice. I mean, what, how, you can't go wrong. And, and uh, Chopper, I'm going to wrap this up with, you're up in Bergen County, but you cover from commercial real estate, basically everything from Monmouth County North, or do you not go yeah. that far? No, we got we got one coming up in Pensacola, so we get around. We're not afraid when it comes to commercial. And and, and you know, commercial. I think uh, a lot of your strong commercial agents are comfortable covering a much broader geography because commercial is more about 
the the, um, the math and understanding the property than you know knowing all the nuances of the local church and whatnot. Correct. So um, you know, Chopper and Patrick are um, available for any of your commercial referrals. Um, you know, I know you've done some rentals that have turned out to be pretty sizable, right? Uh, commercial rentals. Oh, yeah. so don't overlook. Don't overlook those. Uh, some of them can be in the tens of thousands of dollars in commissions. Very true. You have Not anything? Not only that, anything? but you, if you do it right, you also get paid on a renewal. So if you help a tenant achieve five years of great business and they're ready to renew for their sixth year, well, guess what? You're six. You get another check in the mail. So uh, it can be a good way to help keep yourself fed while you're waiting to close some bigger deals. So uh, I, um, I appreciate your time and hopefully this gives us a top of mind awareness to uh, be that total real estate solution for our clients, not just their residential uh, expert. Mm -hmm. And in the process, make a few extra dollars by referring them to, quali to qualified quality people. So I. Uh, I thank you, know, uh, Patrick, Chopper, and David for your contribution, and uh, hopefully we can all have a prosperous referral relationship going back and forth. Um, uh, thank you so much, and everybody have a great, great week. And remember, when Thanks, it comes Rob. to commercial, when, it, when in doubt, refer it out. That's, good that's thinking. Good, good, good way to close that out. Have a great day, everybody. Take care, Take Bye. care guys. Bye. 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 Bye.